What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are getting educational. <laughs> we're getting educational today. So, if you didn't know, in Series 5 we're having access to all of these new Isle of Armor DLC Pokemon, and a few of them are actually kind of decent as Trick Room Setters, and I've been seeing some usage uh, in you know, unofficial tournaments, because uh, the ladder isn't updated yet, but also on the showdown ladder, you'll see these Pokemon pop up from time to time. So I'm going to be discussing who I think are the best Series 5 Trick Room Setters, and just why I think they function as well as they do, and I'll get into which one I think, personally, is probably the best one for the format at the moment. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed this same point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. Let's try to shoot for 150 likes today. Uh, it's Sunday. Sundays, I'm going to try to upload videos of this sort of caliber, or not caliber, but this sort of format where I just discuss things about the metagame, uh, but it won't be as like low edits as, as like this video because the typical version would be like a competitive analysis of a Pokemon within the format. However, since we're not deep into the format yet, um, I don't feel comfortable giving just hard opinions in that uh, sort of sense. So if you guys want an example of, of what kind of videos I'm talking about will go up on Sundays, uh, look at the video that's like my channel trailer at the moment. It's the Venusaur competitive analysis. That's what you should expect on Sundays from when the format starts onward, but let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, the first new Pokemon that we've gotten is Porygon 2, and Porygon 2 is actually a really interesting Pokemon. Uh, it saw heavy, heavy usage in VGC 2017, where it was very difficult to get rid of. Personally, I feel like Porygon 2 in this format would be much more problematic had we not gotten access to the uh, the Swords trio, the Three Musketeers, Terrakion, Virizion, and um, Cobalion, because we would have much less viable fighting types in the format. It would have just been pretty much Conqueror and maybe Hitmontop. And um, Conqueror doesn't have too much of an issue dealing with Porygon 2. However, Hitmontop probably would be a little bit tougher um, of a way of dealing with it. And not every team runs Conqueror, so I'm really glad we got access to uh, Terrakion in particular. So what makes Porygon such a great Trick Room Setter? Porygon is insanely bulky. As you can see, its base stats, it has 85 HP, uh, 80 attack, 90 defense, 105 special attack, 95 special defense, and 60 speed. Basically, 105 special attack, when you pair that with download, if you get the special attack boost from uh, their stats just being, you know, not... Uh, from their stats uh, being less specially defensive, uh, then you're going to actually be quite a big offensive threat, and that's because of your Bolt Beam coverage. If you don't know, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam hit everything, pretty much. There are very few Pokemon that can take both of those uh, comfortably, especially at plus one coming off of Porygon 2. Uh, the Eviolite boosting its uh, bulk also makes it very, very uh, tricky to deal with uh, because it has reliable recovery. Now, the previous Trick Room Setters we had, uh, they usually wouldn't run Recover or any form of recovery uh, beyond Pain Split for Dust Clops, which we'll get into in a minute here, uh, because A, they either had better options uh, as like what they would want to run for their set, or B, they just didn't have recovery. So Porygon 2 having access to recovery on top of only having one weakness in fighting types, with the scarcity of them in the format, uh, is it, it does so much for it. So uh, it's also extremely very splashable. Like I have notes here by the way, I just have like a notepad where I'm talking about all these Pokemon, but uh, it's very splashable. You don't need to run Porygon 2 on a hard Trick Room team, although you will see it on a lot of hard Trick Room teams, because it's very difficult to stop it from getting Trick Room up if you don't have um, A, a way of knocking it out in one hit, or uh, B, Taunt. So if you end up leading without Taunt, it's very difficult to stop Porygon 2 from setting up Trick Room. But yeah, it's very splashable, uh, mainly for the reason of it having good coverage, and it actually can help fix a Trick Room matchup in certain scenarios. Let's say that you like don't have a way of uh, beating Trick Room on your team, uh, you could just run a Porygon 2 because it's, a, it's just a nice mod to have in general. It's very bulky, and you can reverse the Trick Room in certain situations. But yeah, Porygon 2, very, very good in the format. I personally am a fan of it. I'm going to try to build around it in a future video. Uh, but I think at the moment, it's probably either the best or the second best Trick Room Setter. It's kind of tossed up in the air at the moment. Next up, we have Dusclops, which is probably the most notorious Trick Room Setter of this generation uh, because it was our only like super, super bulky Eviolite Trick Room Setter uh, in like the majority of VGC 2020, since I guess we're still in that format. Uh, for the first couple of series of VGC 2020, it was very difficult to deal with. Now, Dusclops is insanely bulky. It only has 40 HP, but 130 defenses uh, on both of its defenses, uh, physical and special. If you max out that HP and slap an Eviolite on it, it's very difficult to deal with. 
Frisk, its ability, is kind of underrated as to how much it does for it. Because we're playing mostly online since of since like the pandemic started, uh, Frisk is amazing for best of one situations. If you lead off with this thing, not only do you have a very good way of setting up Trick Room, because it's hard to stop Dust Clubs from setting up Trick Room short of Taunt, since you can't fake out it and it's pretty hard to one-shot, um, you're also going to get information on the lead. You find out both of their lead Pokemon's items immediately. And that will help you reveal things like a uh, possible uh, reducing berry, like a Koba berry on a, on a, um, what's it called? A Koba berry on a Amoongus, or even just a weakness policy. Being able to identify a weakness policy in the lead is so, so good. But that isn't even like in regards to this being a Trick Room setter. It just makes it a great Pokemon for best of one. So it has very few weaknesses. Ghost is only weak to Ghost itself and uh, Dark, which both of those are pretty common within the format. However, once again, the bulk on this Pokemon makes it extremely difficult to knock out. Um, it has access to Will-O-Wisp, which will increase its bulk. So basically, if you're dealing with something like a Tyranitar, uh, while they can't one-shot you, what you could do is uh, Will-O-Wisp them, so it makes it even more difficult for them to one-shot. It helps nullify things like weakness policies on physical attackers. It has access to Pain Split, which is its only decent form of recovery. Um, like, you could run Rest, but that's an awful set. The reason Pain Split is actually really good on Dusclops is because it has such a low base HP that when you average out its HP and the opponent's HP, they're going to be losing way more HP uh, than they would if you were using something like, a, let's say, like Slowbro got Pain Split. Because that was 95 base HP, when you average the two, they don't take much damage. So it doesn't take much HP uh, on an opposing Pokemon, like percentage-wise, for Dusclops to get a ton of its back. So that's, that's really good for it. Uh, Nightshade is really nice for dealing out damage because it's uh, based on the user's level. You're going to be consistently dealing out 50 uh, HP worth of damage, which is pretty good. Um, like it, it's, it's nice for chipping away at the opposing Pokemon. And another thing in Dusclops' favor is that it's able to run other sort of tech moves. So like let's say you didn't want to run Pain Split or Will-O-Wisp, you could drop them for Gravity, which makes the uh, Rhyperior uh, partner even more threatening to things like Rotom. Or you could run Bulldoze for self weakness policy, making Rhyperior both slower and giving it plus two. You could run Disable, you could run Haze. There's a lot of different things you could run in this Pokemon that makes it pretty threatening within the format. If you run Ally Switch, you're a bad person. Moving on, <laughs> we have Gigantamax Hatterene. Now, Gigantamax Hatterene is another one of these um, offensive Trick Room Pokemon. Magic Bounce is super good for it because you can't taunt this Pokemon and you can't put it to sleep with status moves. You would have to. Well, I mean, we don't have any, like, attacking moves that have a chance to put things to sleep, I think, but you, you get the point. It's very hard to put this thing to sleep uh, and stop the Trick Room. If you pair it up with a uh, Indeedee, it's actually super, super threatening because it did get access to Expanding Force, and with a Life Orb, that's going to be doing a lot of damage. Uh, also, you won't be able to fake out the Hatterene, so the Trick Room is really reliable to get up. Dazzling Gleam is great for hitting both of the opponents, and when you're Gigantamax Hatterene, you can turn Dazzling Gleam or any other kind of fairy move for that case uh, into G-Max Smite, which is a super, super annoying Gigantamax move to deal with because it will confuse both of the opponents, and that just makes it even less likely for them to deal with the Trick Room matchup. Like, it's, it's such an annoying Pokemon. Uh, other things, I guess, like... Actually, I guess that's it. Like, Hatterene is just a really reliable Trick Room Pokemon. While it is kind of frail with 50 base HP and very few, or like 57 base HP and very few people investing into defenses because it's better as an offensive Pokemon, um, it's, it's pretty hard to stop it from getting Trick Room up short of, I guess, somehow knocking it out in one hit while it has a redirection Pokemon next to it. So basically, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. There's only one Pokemon I know that can reliably stop Hatterene Trick Room, and that's actually the next one we have here. Chandelure, uh, while it isn't necessarily known for setting up Trick Room, it's more known for stopping Trick Room, there are some situations where you will set up the Trick Room, so let's get into it. Uh, Chandelure is more of a Pokemon for stopping Trick Room because it gets access to both Trick Room and Imprison. So let's say Chandelure is facing down Hatterene and Didi. Uh, Chandelure will be able to go for the Imprison, stopping them from getting up the Trick Room, and then it'll just be able to do whatever it wants. They tend to run Focus Sash, and that's mostly because, um, like... It, it makes the matchup versus things like Dragapult or Mimikyu much easier to deal with. Uh, and the longer they're in the field, uh, the longer you can prevent opposing Trick Room. However, uh, the reason that you would want to set up Trick Room with Chandelure is to help deal with things like Dragapult, or let's say that you have a slower Pokemon in your team that would in the end game be a 
better offensive option. Uh, because you have that focus sash, because you have the option to set up the trick room, uh, you could protect with your partner Pokemon, set up trick room yourself, and then move on from that point. However, these things tend to be run pretty fast because they don't want to be in trick room. Uh, they just have that option. So that's why I decided the list chandelier. Uh, even though it's not known for setting up trick room, you should still consider it uh, as a trick room Pokemon just because it has the option. Next up, we have a new Pokemon in Galarian Slowbro. Now, Galarian Slowbro has not seen too much usage. It's more a new toy syndrome, if anything. It's just, you know, it's just like something people want to test out. But I think it has some potential. Um, basically, Galarian Slowbro has a couple of things going for it. Those things mainly being it's got a pretty good Togekiss matchup. It resists its uh, fairy type moves, and it's also very good for soaking up hits because of its high base HP. It's got 95 base HP there. You can invest into the special defense stat and go with the sassy nature to make it even easier to soak up those hits. If you Dynamax, you'll also, you'll also turn a Shell Sidearm into always a poison type move, uh, which is nice for uh, dealing with Togekiss since you're usually going to be want to be attacking with your special attack uh, with this Pokemon It's pretty rare that you want to be a physical attacker and Shell Sidearm will turn into a physical attack versus most Togekiss since they have such high base special defense um, Also, it's one of the few good poison types in the metagame So it has a nice matchup versus Hatterene and other fairies uh, as well as grass types uh, Because it's able to soak up those hits and not take much damage from it it got Expanding Force, which is really threatening. You could pair this thing with an Ndidi and do sort of the same thing that uh, Hatterene would do, just not quite as powerful. Uh, Safety Goggle is actually a really great item on this Pokemon because it makes it hard for uh, Amoongus to stop you from setting up. It makes it hard for Venusaur uh, to stop you from setting up Trick Room. It's just overall uh, really nice. But I think what it has going for it above all else is its amazing coverage. So you're usually going to want to run Trick Room, Shell Sidearm, either Expanding Force or Psychic, usually not both. And then your last move, you have way more options than with other Pokemon. It gets pretty much everything. It even gets Flamethrower to fix the Ferrothorn matchup, which is kind of gross. Um, it does get Ice Beam. It gets, does it get Thunderbolt? It doesn't get Thunderbolt, but it gets like so many different moves uh, that you could run. It even gets Grass Knot, Hydro Pump, Scald. Uh, like it, it just has all these different options that you could sort of mix and match uh, to fit your specific build on your team. Uh, so I think it's it's kind of being slept on right now. It even gets even gets um, safeguard, which is interesting. But uh, I think Galarian Slowbro has a lot of room to be explored, and I feel like uh, it's the responsibility of the VGC players to uh, try it out and see how well it can work on a Trick Room team. Also, Regenerator. Regenerator is so good because uh, you're able to set up your Trick Room, and let's say you took way too much damage, you can switch out and get a third of your HP back, which is super huge for Slowbro. Uh, you can run Slowbro and Amoongus next to each other, and because they both have Trick, or because they're both very good Trick Room Pokemon, uh, and they both have Regenerator, uh, you can swap them in and out for each other, and they'll actually be able to. Um, uh, they, they kind of defensively complement each other, even though they're both poison types. They don't share any weaknesses, I believe, uh, because the psychic typing on Slowbro makes it uh, neutral versus psychic moves, um, and the grass typing on Amoongus makes it neutral versus ground moves. They kind of cover each other very well. Reuniclus, the final, uh, the final Trick Room Pokemon I want to mention today. Now, a lot of Reuniclus are currently running Magic Guard, and that's to uh, negate the Life Orb damage that they take. However, I feel like Overcoat's better for this format because it's essentially a built-in safety goggles that will keep it safe from Spore Pokemon or Sleep Powder Pokemon, which is really, really huge in the format. Now, it has some pretty great stats too. Uh, it's more of an offensive Trick Room Pokemon, as we can see right here. Uh, it does have great base HP, which also makes it a great Dynamax option. Uh, it has 75 uh, base defense, 125 special attack, which is kind of nuts. 85 uh, special defense and a pretty low speed tier. In fact, it's speed tied with a um, uh, it's speed ties with Amoongus and uh, Snorlax, which is super super huge. But yeah, um, if you want to be an offensive version, you could run li uh, Life Orb Magic Coat uh, or Magic Guard. But I personally am more of an Overcoat kind of person. Uh, really, all it is is that this thing is super threatening under Trick Room. You Dynamax it, you get your Psychic Terrain up uh, with your Max Psychic, and you could Expanding Force after that point. It's very hard to knock out once it's Dynamax because of that huge HP stat and it's a very threatening Pokemon. So overall, I would sort of rank them as such. I think at the moment, Reuniclus and Porygon 2 are kind of tied for best Trick Room setter, uh, with Dusclops and Hatterene sort of tied for second. Like you can put any one of those in any order, uh, but I think Dusclops and Hatterene are quite a ways behind uh, Porygon 2 and Reuniclus at the moment, just because of the introduction of things like um, more physically threatening Pokemon, as well as Amoongus. Uh, Reuniclus just has that over these other Pokemon. Hatterene is great still, because it has a good Amoongus matchup. 
Uh, Dust Cops is great still just because it's always going to be a reliable Trick Room setter. Chandelure, not great, so it's kind of in last place. So I guess uh, it would be Porygon 2, Reuniclus, both in first, Dust Cops and Hatterene both in second. Slowbro as third and Chandelure in last. So ignore the two ties for first and second. That's just how I personally would rank them. Uh, it, it's kind of dependent on your own build and what you want to run. So if you guys found this video helpful at all for understanding why these Pokemon are great Trick Room setters and choosing a Trick Room Pokemon for your uh, Trick Room offense team or just general team build, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed it at all. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.